Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about rotating 2D objects inside of Unity. So I'll be demoing using my Grid Builder plugin a bit, and then I will show you some code. So I'll jump into my platformer demo over here, and over on the right we'll see I have a few categories of objects I can place into the scene. I'll go to the Animal tab, and I'll select the Vino. Now, for rotating, I have hotkeys set in order to do that. So just like movement, you would want to have a action set, in this case, rotate left or rotate right action. So I'm setting that to R and T on the keyboard. And we can see that the object is going to rotate around its center point, which should be right in the middle of this little build indicator. So as I rotate, it rotates around that origin point of the scene that I'm rotating or the node 2D that is the top level, more specifically. So if we take a look at my console output, we can see that the numbers it's spitting out are between 0 and 180, either positive and negative numbers. So depending on which method you use for uh, writing your code, whether you're setting rotation degrees, global rotation degrees, or, or setting it through a radiance rotation instead directly, then your output might look a little different, but the end result of the object being rotated on the screen will technically be the same. For instance, uh, negative 90 is going to be the same, I believe, as a 270 degree rotation from the other direction. So there shouldn't be any problem at all with a negative number here if you see that in your output. So let's jump into some code here a little bit. I have a function on my building system called rotate preview. I'm calling that whenever the action for rotation in the project is called and the building systems in the scene, then it's going to be handled through unhandled input. So if I scroll down here, I have a section for rotation. So I'm checking if the action that was pressed is rotate right action and that it was just pressed. If that's the case and the object is rotatable, that's just a custom property I have on the resource, and that's completely optional by the way, then I'm going to rotate the preview scene. So the preview scene is what you saw on the screen when in building placement, you're placing an object into the scene. And we just rotate that by a set number of degrees. So where am I getting this rotate increment degrees from? I have a property in the building system for rotate increment degrees. I can actually right click here and look up the symbol to jump straight to it. And I have it set for an export range. So you see here by the decimal point that rotations use floats. There may be a case where you want to rotate from a fraction of a degree. So that makes sense. And I just have a uh, at export range uh, set here. So anything between zero and 360 degrees, I'm considering valid input. Now you could do a 720 degree rotation, but that would just be the same as two 360 degree rotations. So kind of pointless because it gives you the end result anyway. Okay, and then if you don't know, for actually setting these actions, you would go up to project, project settings, input, create an action. So I'm calling it rotate right, rotate left here. So for each of these setting some way to input, in this case, just using simple keyboard. Uh, but if you had a controller input, you could set a option up for that as well. And you can have multiple inputs per action if you didn't already know that. So you, so you don't have to create a different action for every single different device. You would just simply add an input from a different device like a joypad or a mouse button. So for the rotation itself, if you are setting the amount of rotation that you want to do through the inspector in terms of degrees instead of radians, then the simplest way to handle it is going to simply be to take your node 2D, uh, either do the global rotation degrees property, and add or subtract the degrees of the rotation depending on which direction you're doing. Um, in my input code up above, I would simply pass uh, like negative degrees into here. So if I'm adding a negative number over here, it's the same as subtracting a positive. Right, and that's going to effectively work very similarly if you do global rotation degrees or rotation degrees. So the advantage of adding the global rotation degrees instead of the rotation degrees is that by default, is it's going to reset it to some number between, I guess, negative uh, 180 and 180. I'm not sure if it can go to 270 or 360, but uh, definitely below 360 degrees. So it won't count uh, extra full rotations anymore. Okay, so if instead of using global rotation degrees, you instead do rotation degrees without this float modulate function, uh, which basically removes extra increments of 360 degrees from the final number, uh, then what you're gonna get is it can do more than one rotation in terms of the value that's represented uh, in the rotation degrees property. So it can go above 360 degrees to 720, 1080, 
theoretically, um, basically an infinite number. So if you wanted to know by dividing by 360, how many rotations has actually occurred in one direction, then that might be helpful to you. But if you prefer just everything to be represented between the zero and 360 degree number, and then this probably isn't what you want. So I will go ahead and do a quick test run of that. Let's rerun the scene platformer demo and let's rotate this a few times so i'm gonna rotate a bunch of times and you can see how this number just keeps incrementing over and over again so here's one of the gotchas of uh, floating point numbers in godot more specifically with the rotation system so um usually you would get precise numbers if you use floats uh, even if you're just like adding 90 over and over again but I think the reason this happens might be to do with it converting between radians and rotation degrees internally, though don't quote me on that, I'm not certain. But in any case, when you rotate in Godot, the actual number is going to be an approximation. With floating points, there's always the potential for the end number being uh, a little bit inaccurate. So it's technically almost the same. But it's not the same. So if you try to check for a rotation value and you use a, a direct equals equivalent, then you may run into a error. So, so whenever you're working with floats, if you want to check if it's equal to something, then instead of doing something like this, getting a Boolean value where you check if something is the exact equivalent of another, you should do is or is equal approximate. And then you have two floats. So that would be inside preview instance, rotation degrees, and then 90.0 over here. So if you have 1890 over here on the right, and then this number on the left, then this will return true. But this, which would almost be the same thing, would return false. So you want to be careful about that with floats in general. And here I actually have a simple unit test for a uh, rotation adding the degrees in here where you can kind of confirm that. So if I go over here and I run my math rotate test, so it rotates 25 times. And then we can see that we get that weird degree number, even though we're setting the degrees directly, where we expect it to be exactly equal, but it's not. But instead, if we do something like an assert almost equal, and then as the third parameter, we give it the error interval and we say something like 001, or 0 0.001, then that should work just fine. Okay, so here we can see it actually passed this time. So, you know, just something to be aware of. And if you're curious about, you know, how I'm writing this test, it's good old unit test, not really for this video, but just so you can be aware of uh, testing your functions and such. So let's show a couple more options for rotating your objects. Uh, one would be to use radians, and we can convert from degrees to radians if we want to do that. So if we wanted to convert degrees to radians, then we would do something like var degree radians, as in like degrees in terms of radians, and we would do equals degree to radians, or deg underscore to underscore rad, meaning degrees to radians, of course. So if we press in the degrees, then this will give it in terms of radians. And then once we have it in radians, we can do preview instance dot rotate, which takes radians, and we can do degree radians. Uh, so that should work pretty much exactly the same. Uh, let's hit play and we go to platformer and we'll rotate this right now. We can see it's still rotating around. Now you can see in terms of numbers that the rotation is a total. It's uh, not the amount of the current full rotation, but the total degrees rotated that's getting printed out here. So this is uh, basically the equivalent of doing rotation degrees with the extra step of converting it to radians first. So if you didn't want to get the import from the user in terms of degrees, which I think would just be a little bit more um, straightforward to understand just how much out of 360 you want to rotate, uh, then you can use uh, pi and then divide that to get a certain number of degrees in terms of radians. So for instance, if I want to do 90 degrees, then we would want pi for the pi constant and then divide by two which gives you the equivalent radians of 90 degrees. So this is effectively that. And if we rerun this scene, then we'll see that that's still the case. So let's get the rhino, rotate a couple times, and we can see it is in fact rotating 90 degrees each time. So if you want that to be 180, then we would just give it a the divide by two, and then we're gonna be rotating 180 degrees each time. So we'll go in here, rhino, rotate a bunch of times, 
Now see that this doesn't solve the floating point problem. And just when it's converting back between uh, radians and degrees to give you this rotation degrees value, there's just that little bit of error in the conversion, I suppose. So you still got to be aware of that. Rotating in degrees is not a magic fix for this. So it's effectively the same. You're just using a different representation of the same value. Okay, so one last one I can show you guys. So there are other methods of rotating your objects. For instance, uh, preview instance dot look at, and this makes the 2D node look at a certain point within the world space. So if you had another object you wanted to look at, you could do something like other node dot global position, and you can use that vector and assign it inside of here. But there's already a really good video out there for explaining how to do this and how to make look at not be instantaneous. Uh, but more gradual over time in the case of like an enemy looking at a player. So instead of recovering that, I'm just going to link that video so you guys can check that out if you're trying to just make enemies look at players. But hopefully for doing manual rotations by a set number of degrees, I've done a pretty good job explaining it, at least in terms of 2D space. But if you're wondering which of these options I'm actually just choosing to use, uh, that would be the one with global rotation degrees. Since this just makes it simple, you don't have to worry about extra increments of 360 degrees. It's, it's always going to be capped within one rotation when you check the rotation degrees property. So you don't need to do the float modulate. And in terms of code, it's just a single line here. Very easy to understand. No need to convert to radians. So that's what I would probably go with in most cases. So that's going to be it for my 2D rotation video inside of Godot. I hope this was helpful for all of you. So that's going to be it for my 2D rotation video. If uh, you are interested in the object placement I was showing, then you can check out my Grid Builder plugin, which allows you to place objects into the scene during gameplay. And until my future video content, I will see you all then.